Hey, are you exactly where God wants you to be? Is your obedience on swole? Are you satisfied with your prayer life? Have you stopped what you need to stop and started what you need to start? Have you left that toxic person alone or have you been working overtime in identifying folks who you can serve or possibly even disciple? The answer to at least one of those questions is probably no. Even the super Christians among us got some work to do. So if you're like me, life is about constant assessment and at times realizing that we got to get back on track. So join me as we look in the book of Exodus and talk about the topic, getting back on track. Coming up next on the Triflo Ones. take a look at three verses today and those three verses are exodus chapter 4 verses 24 through 26 again it's exodus chapter 4 verses 24 through 26 and i'm reading from the new living translation and it says on the way to egypt at a place where moses and his family had stopped for the night the lord confronted him and was about to kill him But Moses' wife, Zipporah, took a flint knife and circumcised her son. She touched his feet with the foreskin and said, Now you are a bridegroom of blood to me. When she said a bridegroom of blood, she was referring to the circumcision. After that, the Lord left him alone. Now, this text takes place right after Moses has had a conversation with God in a place called Midian. And through a burning bush, God tells Moses that he's heard his people's cries and he sees what they're going through. And he's going to use Moses to lead the nation of Israel out of slavery, out of bondage, out of Egypt. And he's going to take them into the promised land. So Moses has his marching orders. He knows what it is that he's supposed to do. He takes his wife and his kids. They pack up the SUV and they're supposed to go to Pharaoh, the king in Egypt, and demand the release of God's people. And that brings us back to verse 24. So there are two things that we're going to talk about today. And the first of those is we must reconsider his instructions. We must reconsider his instructions. So verse 24 says, on the way to Egypt at a place where Moses and his family had stopped for the night, the Lord confronted him and was about to kill him. (laughs) Let's pause for a moment. Let's, Let's think about this. God has just said, Moses, I need you to go back to Egypt. I need you, uh, to, uh, tell Pharaoh that I said this so that our people, my people, can be liberated. So Moses is on the road trip. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He pulls over at the rest stop or at the motel to get some rest. And now God is talking about killing him. What is going on here? Well, Moses needed to reconsider his instructions. Now, the answer to why God was going to kill him isn't completely spelled out here. It's not plain as day, but many scholars believe that the answer can be found in the very next verse. Because in the next verse, it says that Moses' wife, Zipporah, takes a knife and she circumcises their son. And it's after that takes place that God leaves Moses alone. So many scholars believe that uh, Moses, while he was in Midian, failed to adhere to God's commands. Remember, God told the nation of Israel that they were to circumcise their sons on the eighth day. 
And so that means that if Moses' son was any older than eight days old, then he would be out of compliance with God's law. In the book of Genesis, circumcision was a sign of the connection, the agreement between God and Abraham. And so it set his people apart in their practices. It was a sacrifice that identified his people with him. Now Moses, while he's away from Egypt, while he's away from his people, he fails to do something that is supposed to be a connection to God. Think about it. Is there anything that you've stopped doing that connects you to God? Something that he's given you some pretty straightforward instructions about, but you haven't followed through on. You stopped. You've taken on other traditions and, and belief systems. You don't think it's really that important anymore to do the thing that you know God has told you to do. Well, the question becomes, have you cut off the things that he's told you got to be cut off? Maybe you're holding on to people and things that will get you killed. Maybe not literally, but certainly spiritually. And God is saying, you need to reconsider my instructions the things that I told you to do. So how's your prayer life? How's your discipline? You still holding on to that doubt that he told you to cut off? Or are you still arrogant enough to think that you can handle this all on your own? Are you still so hard-headed that you can't hear or listen to the things that people who love you are trying to tell you? We must reconsider his instructions. But the second thing that we've got to do to get on track is that we must reconnect with our identity. We must reconnect with our identity. So Moses is on his way back to Egypt because he's been hanging out in Midian and he's forgotten about who he was. He was an Israelite. So he ended up in in Midian after running away from Egypt. And the reason why he did that is because we're told that Uh, He saw or witnessed an Egyptian beating an Israelite slave. And Moses' response to that was to kill the Egyptian. So Moses had somehow disconnected from his people and his God. Now, there's no recorded discussions between Moses and God during the time that he's in Midian before he gets word through this burning bush. Now, it may have taken place, but, but, but I believe that Moses was on a hiatus. He was on like a sabbatical. He was on like a, a lengthy vacation. And God needed to remind him of who he was and whose he was. Moses needed to reconnect with his identity in God. You know, sometimes when something tragic happens, when something traumatic takes place, when the unexpected pops up, We get thrown off and and sometimes we take our own sabbatical from the things of God because we're confused. Sometimes we're just mad. Sometimes we're just in that place where we don't feel like certain things. We know we belong to him, but we kind of take a break. We don't operate like he is the single most important part of our lives. So we're off in Midian just kind of doing our thing. But I want to remind us now that we belong to the Most High. We belong to the one who is our Father, and He desperately, and I do mean desperately, wants to have a close relationship with us. He knows that you've done some shameful things. Moses committed a capital offense before he ran away, and yet God called him back into His service. We must reconnect with our identity. There is nothing that you've done that can keep you from being used by him if you want to, if you're willing to get back on track. He is saying, you know, something took you off track. Something moved you away from me and and from the place that we used to be in. But today, know that we must reconsider his instructions, or deal with the consequences. In Moses' case, it would have been death if his wife hadn't stepped in 
and we must reconnect with our identity in him. This is how we get back on track and get back to what he truly requires of us. Heavenly Father, we come before you because we recognize that we're not all the way where we need to be, which means that we need to be on track. Lord, you know what's happened in our life that's thrown us off, that's created doubt, that's made us angry, that's taken us to a place where we needed to take some type of break. But now we hear you speaking to us, maybe not through a burning bush, but certainly through our car speakers or through our headphones or through our computer or or however we may be listening. And you're saying to us that you're calling us back, back to the place. You're letting us know that you have forgiven us for the things that we've done, but that you're calling us to do so much more. I'm asking, Heavenly Father, that you would give us the strength that we need to be able to be on that journey back to Egypt, back to you, reconsidering and reconnecting what you're all about. We're also asking, Heavenly Father, that you would make our our path straight, that you would take us through the rough patches, and that ultimately, your will be done. Finally, Heavenly Father, as always, we ask that you forgive us because we are oh so sorry. We ask, dear God, that you would receive us, that you would clean us up, that you would use us, and that you would place us back on track. All of this we ask In your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all of the Triplin Ones said, Amen.